Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at how we can paint a model that is predominantly flesh. So I'm going to use a Plague Bearer model because they're some of my favourite and they're more or less all flesh, but this technique could be applied to things like uh, ghouls, ogres, um, what else, so zombies, anything that you've got a lot of flesh on show. As always with the army painting, we're going to focus on getting a fantastic result in an achievable time so we can get those awesome looking models on the table, ready to play some games. I'm starting off over a black primer here, and we're gonna do a pre-shade or pre-highlight. I'm gonna use Tamiya Flat White for this. I've thinned it heavily, about five drops of Tamiya X20A thinner. It's important we use Tamiya thinner when we're using Tamiya acrylic paints. I'm firing it through about 25 PSI in the airbrush, and the airbrush is a 0.4mm Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. The reason we're using such thin layers is we're going to build them up over the black, creating grey, and then eventually where we apply a lot of layers to an area, we'll get white. Particularly when we're using more pale colours, which you will probably often use when you're doing skin tones, or various different sort of necrotic flesh, things like that. The benefit of the pre-shade underneath means we're able to get a brighter, final colour. Certain colours it really doesn't make any difference, um, but certainly the ones we'll use in this video and all those sorts of pale greens and off-whites, yellows, things like that, this is a worthwhile stage. It's not a fancy pre-shade, it's more or less just a zenithal, so I'm focusing on making sure the areas that are facing up towards the light as if it was coming from above are going to be the brightest, and therefore the areas facing away will be the darkest. One more thing we can do as part of our pre-shade is a dry brush. And here I'm using a nice thick white paint, in this case Vallejo model colour white, and I'm just going to dry brush the whole model. Depending on the sculpt this will be more or less effective, but it's a nice way of doing a little bit of sort of cheeky edge highlighting. Over our pre-shade we're going to start with our first colour, and I'm going to use GW Cadian Flesh Tone. I've decided to paint uh, Alf, the plague bearer here, more using paints that I would typically use if I was painting a simple Caucasian skin. I thought this might be quite fun, seeing as we tend to see the plague bearers in sort of greens or yellows uh, more often. But let's see what it looks like on him. So I've thinned this down with uh, Life Colour thinner, but you can use whatever thinner airbrush thinner you've got, it's fine. Probably thinned it about three, three drops of thinner to paint. Getting it to a consistency where I'm going to need to apply probably three to four layers to get a nice base colour. When we did our zenithal pre-shade, we focused on hitting the areas at the top. To put our shadow in, I'm effectively pointing the model away from me and then spraying at it so I can only hit the shadows. And here I'm using a thin down, a very dilute mix actually, of scale 75 African shadow. Probably four, maybe even five drops of thinner to paint. And I just want to build it up in a couple of layers and give a bit of colour to those shadow areas. It's already looking pretty nice. But now I want to add a couple of extra highlights just to those areas in the pre-shade that we focused on making a really brilliant white colour. And for this I'm using Vallejo Model Colour Basic Skin Tone. Again thinned down uh, quite a lot, probably again four or five drops of thinner. Uh, I'll spray it on the base in a second you can see just how thin it is there. I'm still spraying at the same 25 psi I've been doing all along. And here we're just focusing on those areas we want to draw a bit of attention to. So the top of the tummy, the face, maybe the thigh, uh, on the back is butt, things like that. With three colours we've already now got a really nice variation of tones across the model. I give the whole model a couple of coats of gloss varnish here. I'm using Vallejo Polyurethane Gloss. You use whatever you enjoy in your airbrush. Uh, one of my favourites actually at the moment is the Ammo by MIG Lucky Varnishes. They're fantastic through the airbrush. I wanted to use uh, an acrylic paint here rather than a typical oil wash or enamel wash that you might see on this type of paint job. This is just to vary it up a little bit. So I've taken GW Contrast Paint Fire Slayer Flesh. 
I've thinned it very heavily with water on my palette. And I'm just going to slop it all over the model. I've thinned it a lot and that coupled with that high gloss finish to the model is going to encourage the paint not to really behave like a contrast paint so it won't stain the flat surfaces too much. It should just collect in the recesses. And when you've got sculpts like this Plague Bearer which have all these wonderful little details on, it's worth using a wash to bring some definition to some of those. You notice when I was doing the painting faces video, I didn't use a wash because I didn't feel we needed to, it didn't bring anything to the party. But here, there's some nice little details it will uh, help accentuate. I've let this dry for about less than two minutes just on the desk, no hairdryer or anything. And now I'm taking a dry Q-tip, I'm just very, very gently moving it, sort of rolling it over the areas where I focused on the highlights before. So we just want to remove any of that flesh, uh, fire slayer flesh that's on there. We really don't want to darken those areas down at all. Now the gloss was to help the wash move around. It's not going to do a huge amount of protection on the model. It's a bit of a misconception. Uh, if I rubbed hard at this model with this cotton bud right now, it would still remove the paint. It's nothing to do with solvents or anything like that. It tends to be do, to do with abrasion when people rub the paint off when they're doing this sort of technique. But I thought it'd be nice just to use acrylics uh, and see the effects that we can get from that. But you can see how much we've taken off on the tip of the Q-tip there. I don't really like the finish that Contrast gives us, so I'm going to give the whole model a couple of coats of Amma by MIG Ultra Matte Lucky Varnish. I haven't needed to thin this at all, still using the same airbrush, 25 psi, really big fan as I say of this uh, brand at the moment for varnishes. And there he is. Now this is more or less the teaching point I wanted for this video. How to approach painting a large aero skin uh, on one of our infantry models. So you could apply this to all sorts like I said at the beginning, ogres, zombies, uh, ghouls, anything like that. But I'm going to finish the model off because as I said I love these plate bearer minis. So we'll have a little bit of fun here now. Uh, just paint some of the details in. See what we can do with just acrylic paints. So I've grabbed an off-white, uh, in this case it's GW Rakar Flesh, just use whatever you've got, really doesn't matter. I'm just going to paint all of his innards and quite a few of the little boils that are over the model. And take your time with this stage, don't uh, try not to get the paint on all that lovely skin that you've just painted because we are completely finished with that now. And for any bone parts of the model, so his horns and this spine that's poking out the back of him, I'm going to base coat it with Vallejo model colour US Olive Drab. You'll know if you've watched many of our videos, I'm a big fan of this as a base colour for working bones off. And then I'm adding a little bit of Karak Stone into that Olive Drab to highlight with. So I'll start with a probably 75% US Olive Drab, 25% Karak Stone for a first highlight. Then I'll mix a little bit more in on the palette, do the next one, and work my way up to pure Karak Stone for a highlight. Decided I wanted to try and paint this plate bearer a little differently to how I, I normally do. Uh, I'm a big fan of using sort of oil washes and enamel washes and making them really dingy and grimy. Um, I'm always painting him as if he was a not a plague bearer, I guess. For the horns, uh, I did exactly this. I didn't really like the result. I thought it was too light. So rather than adding in Karak Stone, I just added in black. So I blended up to black. For his sword, I'm base coating it using a very matte brown paint here. This is Scale 75 Brown Leather. Scale 75 paints have an extremely matte finish, barring the things like the inks and the metals, obviously. And that can make them a little bit tricky to work with sometimes. But for this sort of application, they're absolutely perfect. We're going to play around with a contrast to finish on this model now. So I've grabbed another Scale 75 paint, uh, Kalahari Orange. I'm just sponging this all over that sword to start to create rust. Now, if you haven't got these paints, you can always add a drop of matte varnish into whatever paint you do have, or just paint some matte varnish over it when you're finished. But certainly with army painting, I like to have as few stages as possible. It just helps us get it done quicker. And now I'm taking a silver, in this case GW Lead Belcher. It's more or less dry on my brush. 
and I'm just catching the edges where that rust would probably rub off. This is one of my go-to techniques when I'm painting rusted weapons, so Nurgle, Skaven, uh, Undead, anything like that. It's a really good way of uh, highlighting that contrast to finish. So we've got a very, very matte flat color underneath the brown and the orange, and then we've got this super bright metallic over the top of it. And now I'm gonna grab a few clear paints. Uh, you could probably use something like Nurgle's Rot. I haven't got it, so I'm not gonna use it. But I've got Plague Bearer Flesh contrast paint here, partly because I love using paints that have the name on the model. I don't know why. And I'm gonna paint quite a few of his boils using this. I haven't thinned this at all. This is just on the palette, use it as normal. And then I've also got some Tamiya Smoke on my palette and some Tamiya Clear Red. I wouldn't suggest doing what I'm about to do, which is use your nice brush with the Tamiyas, because they're pretty disgusting with brush. But I apply a bit of that smoke, mix in a little bit of the clear red. It's a classic combination of paints for blood and guts. It's been used for donkey's years and it's really effective. Things like Blood for the Blood God are excellent. Again, I don't have it. I've just used clear red and smoke for years. I haven't found the need to use a different product. It's got a super glossy finish, nice variety of color in there already, and it just looks gross. And particularly again, next to that super matte finish on the sword, quite a matte finish on the skin. This brings a ton of contrast in, and that's the kind of thing that's gonna help a model really show up on the gaming table. Take your time with this stage. I'm gonna pull down a few little drips and things across him, uh, coming out some of those wounds, but I don't want to get too much of it over his skin. You notice I've also painted the eye black. I will give that a little wash with a uh, Tamiya smoke to give it a little gloss. It doesn't look great in photos, but I love the look of a black gloss eye on a demonic model. I think it's great. And here he is done. Just our simple YouTube star basing. I'm really quite chuffed with how this guy's come out, especially as we were kind of winging it after we'd done the flesh. I've popped him on the shelf with the other uh, models from the YouTube series, and he certainly shows up, certainly catches your eye. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I feel like we've accomplished the goal we set out with, which was to achieve a really fantastic looking skin tone across a large area, which looks great on the table. It's actually only three, maybe four stages. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you found it useful, then hit the like button, tell other people. Pop something down in the comments if you'd like to see me do a different style of flesh on a different model, and hit that little notifications bell to keep up to date with all the content we're producing. And I'll see you next time.